All receivers to full, all transmitters to boost. This is London calling. In the everlasting words of Joe Strummer, let Nina Simone rule the world. London calling to the faraway towns The war is declared, the battle come down London calling to the underworld Come out of the cupboard, you boys and girls London calling, now don't look to us From Brexit mania has bitten the dust London calling, she ain't got no swing Except for a ring of that trenchant thing The ashes is coming Sun zooming in, meltdown expected, and weeds grow thin. Engines stop running. I have no fear. London is drowning, but I live by the river. London calling to the imitation zone. Forget it, brother. You can go it alone. London calling to the zombies of death. Quit holding out and draw another breath. London calling, now I don't want to shout. While you were talking, I saw you nodding out. London calling, so we ain't got no highs except for the one with that yellowy eye. The acid is coming, sun zooming in. Engine stop running and we scroll thin. A nuclear era, I have no fear. London is drowning in I Live by the river. Now get this, London calling, I was there too. You know what they said, well, some of it was true. London calling at the top of the dial. And after all this world, you give me a smile. I never felt so much alike, 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 alike. Welcome to Joe Strummer Night. And this is Radio Clash. Let me take you into the engine room. Ladies and gentlemen, Mick, can you count us in? I'm not working. Let's get this show on the road. What's happening? Sound is back. Thank you, sound engineer. Number one. Kick over the world, cause governments can fall 
how can you refuse it? Let beauty and the hour and no can power, you know you can use it. The voices in your head are coming. Stop wasting your time, there's nothing coming. Only if you think someone can save you. Oh, the man in the factory, they're old and cunning. You don't owe nothing. Boy, get running, it's the best years of your life. They wanna steal. One, two, three, you go up and you come down and you work and pull the clamp down. You start wearing blue and brown and you work and pull the clamp down. But you got someone to boss around and it makes you feel big now. And you drift until you brutalize, you made your first kill now. Oh, lately one or two is for you blame fake news working for the clamp down. Ha! Get along the law, yeah, working for the clamp down. Ha! Get along the law, you're working for the clamp down. Gotta stop it now, we're gonna stop working for my like farm no more, no more. Get along, get along, you're working for the clamp down. Okay. The clamp down. Okay. How's everyone tonight? Let's just shut up and keep playing. This one is for the man that started the whole education into the punk rock scene. Clash as a band were one of the most influential music groups of all time and uh, a little group in County Derry. Let's just get this fella proper again. Something's I want to send this out to all my wonderful cousins. They're not like Kevin. They're very cool. And actually the originator, Mr. Hugh O'Callaghan from Carlo to Canada. I still want to be like him when I grow up. He was the originator, the punk rock cousin. Yo, yo. What a shame, it's in vain, it's a total rejection 
He will never be left on the shelf Kevin, he's in love with himself Oh, my perfect cousin What I like to do, he doesn't He's his family's pride and joy His mother's little golden boy Yeah! The undertones. What a band. Okay. Uh, so let's um, let's uh, let's introduce. This is my dad's jacket. Still looking good, Mr. Banderas, Antonio. Whoa. Whoa. Just, here we go. So this is my Clash apparel. Poor old Michael shirt. Got the hammer out today. What you think? Okay. What's next on the agenda? My, my man here is, uh, is uh, keeping me posted. We are gonna bring in the camera and we're gonna just do this. That's cool. And uh, sorry about the, uh, yeah. And Radio Clash. So we're talking tonight, we're not talking at all. I have to shut up and play the songs. But in a nutshell, Joe Strummer, he just is the He's the musical hero, I guess you could say, without being OTT about it. And uh, the Clash were incredibly influential. They, they, that time in in music history, the late seventies, early eighties. Uh, that's good. Now, so there was a little band in Dublin. Only one of them. The story goes that one of them had a ticket to get into the Trinity College gig. So it was apparently Larry that had to let the, I think it was Larry that had to let the other three members of this band in. And uh, so this is a song they wrote about what the clash meant to them. I love this song. Okay.
glad that's over. So, I think there was a good story as well when the Clash went to see the, or when Joe Strummer went to see the Sex Pistols, which were, they were, you know, sort of just hitting their, their big time before the Clash. He kind of saw them and it changed his whole world view. He said, they don't care what people think. They're just going to do what they want on the stage and they don't care what the audience think. So um, I think that's a good uh, it's a good position after that terrible performance there. So anyway, yeah, Bono's not going to be giving me a ring after that. Now, uh, moving on, moving on. Yeah, jeez, it's hot in here now, I tell you. I have, the, uh, I have this lovely punk IPA for the occasion, so it's a great drink from a fantastic off-license in Trim. Uh, the Wine House, I have to say, big shout out to the Wine House. They have an extraordinary selection, and I found the punk IPA there yesterday. So, cheers to the Wine House. Mm. Okay, all right. Joe Strummer um, had a wonderful collaboration towards the end of their both their careers with Johnny Cash. Rick Rubin had um, the legendary producer. Rick Rubin had. Um, started making the American Recordings albums with, with Johnny Cash. So jo Joe Strummer got to go over and do some music with, with, with of course, the wonderful Johnny Cash. And the two men were, they were almost, their whole careers, they come from very different places, but they, they were almost, you could say, of the same soul. The, um, the song that I have tonight is, is one of the ones they did together, Redemption Song, and it was, for the people that they wear, I think it's the most beautiful, beautiful song. So hopefully this will be a bit better than the U2 tune. Back to Joe Strummer. No more other bands now. It's all Joe from here on in. Um, with his either The Clash or The Mescaleros. So here we go with Redemption Song. stop me there because I forgot to change the guitar and I also forgot to turn off the uh, electricity so I have to get a special guitar now for this guitar there's a little story and again it's I'll cut down on the chat this amazing guitar was made by Jan Mallert from our bracken and I want a big shout out to my birthday to Jan the heart the gifted extraordinarily gifted harp maker who lives down the wonderful Kilfour Road in Ard Bracken so it's an amazing piece. It's a lovely old classical guitar. So and thank you to my big brother, Mr. Richie. Thanks for the loan of your beautiful guitar. So uh, here we go. <laughs> Show 
Cash and Strummer did that. It was really, it was very special, very special. It was a beautiful, the two, two giants, two amazing people, two geniuses singing a song together. It was a lovely, lovely thing. And of course, you couldn't get a better song. So how's everyone doing tonight? I can't really read the screen there, but I'm seeing there. Uh, uh, thanks very much, Helen. Lovely to see a few comments coming in. Um, right, well, at this point, um, Joe, when he was in his young years, he, uh, he he gave himself a nickname, maybe in his late teens, of Woody. Woody, after his um, favourite, uh, one of his heroes was, of course, the, the folk legend Woody Guthrie. So he, he took on Woody as a nickname in, in, the, in the Joe Strummer mythology. So I kind of looked into it and... and and then I found a, a a great spoken word poem by Bob Dylan. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you to just indulge me now. So I'll, I'll be just reading out this. Um, because it really was a really... It's a, it's a long one, but it's a cool... Um, it helped me understand why Joe was in thrall or, or, or um, in awe of Woody. Woody was a huge influence, all that sort of roots rock rebel... Woody Guthrie on his guitar had the famous guitar where he wrote uh, This Machine Kills Fascists on his guitar so huge influence on Joe Strummer's philosophy so I'm going to just uh, smack a bit here and everything looking okay on the screen so so Bob Dylan wrote this they asked Bob I'll just read it out it's, uh, it's a little guitar break so this is Bob Dylan oh, the, oh, if you, it might be in his accent a bit because be listening to it all the time. I'll try and be. I'll, I'll try not to annoy you too much. There's this book coming out, and they asked me to write something about Woody. Sort of. What does Woody Guthrie mean to you in 25 words? I uh, I couldn't do it. I wrote out five pages, and I have it here. I have it here by accident, actually. So uh, if you don't mind, uh, can you sort of roll along with this thing? This is called Last Thoughts on Woody Guthrie. It's uh, that was Bob's chat there before. It was. It's on one of those bootleg. Uh, bootleg tapes of Bob Dylan. This is Bob's last thoughts on Woody Guthrie. When your head gets twisted and your mind grows numb, when you think you're too old, too young, too smart or too dumb, when you're lagging behind and losing your pace in the slow motion crawl of life's busy race, no matter what you do and if you start giving up, if the wine don't come to the top of your cup, if the wind's got you sideways with one hand holding on and the other starts slipping and the feeling is gone, your train engine fire needs a new spire to catch it, and the wood's easy finding, but you're lazy to fetch it. And your sidewalk starts curling and the street gets too long, and you start walking backwards though you know it's wrong. 
And lonesome comes up as down goes the day, and tomorrow's morning seems so far away. You feel the rains from your pony are slipping, your ropes are sliding because your hands are dripping. Your sun-decked desert and evergreen valleys turn to broken down slums and trash can alleys. Your sky cries water and your drain pipes are pouring and the lightnings are flashing and the thunders are crashing. The windows are rattling and breaking and the rooftops are shaking. Your whole world's a slamming and banging and your minutes of sun turn to hours of storm. And to yourself you sometimes say, I never knew it was going to be this way. Why didn't they tell me this the day I was born? And you start getting chills and you're jumping from sweat and you're looking for something you ain't quite found yet. You're knee deep in the dark water. With your hands in the air, and the whole world's a-watching with a window peak stare. Your good gal leaves, and she's long gone a-flying, and your heart feels sick and the f like fish when they're frying. Your jackhammer falls from your hand to your feet, and your bell's banging loudly, but you can't hear its beat. You think your ears might have been hurt, or your eyes have turned filthy from the sight blind and dirt. You figured you failed in yesterday's rush when you were faked out and fooled while facing a four-flush. All the time you were holding three queens and it's making you mad, it's making you mean. Like in the middle of Life magazine. Bouncing around in a pinball machine. There's something on your mind and you want to be saying that somebody someplace ought to be hearing. But it's trapped on your tongue and sealed in your head. And it bothers you badly when you're laying in bed. No matter how you try, you just can't say it. You're scared to your soul, you just might forget it. And your eyes got swimming from the tears in your head. Your pillows of feathers turned to blankets of lead. The lion's mouth opens and you're staring at his teeth and his jaws start closing with you underneath. You're flat on your belly with your hands tied behind and you wish you'd never taken that last detour sign. You say to yourself, just what am I doing? On this road I'm walking, on this trail I'm turning, on this curve I'm hanging, on this pathway I'm strolling in the space I'm taking, in this air I'm inhaling. Am I mixed up too much? Am I mixed up too hard? Am I walking where I'm running? What am I saying? What am I knowing? On this guitar I'm playing, on this banjo I'm frailing, on this mandolin I'm strumming on this song I'm singing. In the tune I'm humming, in the words I'm writing, in the words that I'm thinking. In this ocean of ours all the time drinking. Who am I helping? What am I breaking? What am I taking? What am I giving? But you try with your whole soul best never to think these thoughts and never to let them kind of thoughts gain ground or make your heart pound. But then again you know why they're around, just waiting for a chance to slip and drop down because sometimes you hear them when the night comes creeping. You fear that they might catch you sleeping. And you jump from your bed, from your last chapter of dreaming. You can't remember for the best of your thinking. If that was you in the dream that was screaming, and you know there's something special that you're needing. You know that there's something, there's no drug that'll do for the healing. There's no liquor in the land to stop your brain from bleeding, or your brain from bleeding. You need something, yeah, you need something special, all right. You need a fast flying train on a tornado track to shoot you someplace and shoot you back. You need a cyclone wind on a steam engine howler that's been banging and booming and blowing forever. That knows your troubles a hundred times over. You need a greyhound bus that don't bar no race. It won't laugh at your books, your voice or your face. By any number of bets in the book, we'll be rolling long after the bubblegum craze. You need something to open up a new door, to show you something you've never seen before, overlooked a hundred times or more. You need something to open your eyes. You need something to make it known that it's you and no one else that owns that spot that you're standing, that space that you're sitting. That the world ain't got you beat, that it ain't got you licked. It can't get you crazy no matter how many times you might get kicked. You need something special, all right. You need something special to give you hope, but hope's just a word. Maybe you said or maybe you heard. Some windy corner around a wide-angle curve. That's what you need, man, and you need it bad. Your trouble is you know it too good. Because you look and you start getting the chills because you can't find it on a dollar bill. And it ain't on Macy's windowsill. It ain't on no rich kid's road map. It ain't on no fat cat's fraternity house. And it ain't made in no Hollywood wheat germ. It ain't on that dim lit stage with that half wit comedian on it, ranting and raving, taking your money, but Tommy Tiernan sure is funny. No, you can't find it in no nightclub or no yacht club, and it ain't in the seats of a supper club, and as sure as hell you're bound to tell. No matter how hard you rub, you just ain't gonna find it on your ticket stub. No, and it ain't in the rumors people are telling you, it ain't in the pimple lotion people are selling you. It ain't in no cardboard box house or down any movie star's blouse. You can't find it on the golf course. Uncle Remus can't tell you, and neither can Santa Claus. It ain't in the cream puff hairdo or cotton candy clothes. It ain't in the dime store dummies or the bubblegum goons. And it ain't in the marshmallow noises of the chocolate cake voices. They come knocking and tapping in Christmas rapping. Saying, ain't I pretty? Ain't I cute? Look at my skin. Look at my skin shine. Look at my skin glow. Look at my skin laugh. Look at my skin cry. When you can't even sense if they got any insides. These people so pretty in their ribbons and bows. No, you'll not now or no other day find it on the doorsteps made out of paper mache. Inside it, the people made a molasses that every other day buy a new pair of sunglasses. 
It ain't in the 50 star generals and flipped out phonies who turn you in for a tenth of a penny. Who breathe and burp and bend and crack and before you can count from one to ten, do it all over again but this time behind your back, my friend. The ones that wheel and deal and whirl and turl and play games with each other in their sandbox world. You can't find it either in the no-talent fools that run around gallant, make all the rules for the one that got talent. And it ain't in the ones that got any talent, that ain't got any talent, and think they do, and think they're fooling you. The ones who jump in the wagon just for a while because they know it's in style, to get their kicks, get out of it quick, make all kinds of money and chicks, you yell to yourself and you throw down your hat, saying, Christ, do I gotta be like that? Ain't there no one here that knows where I'm at? Ain't there no one here that knows how I feel? Good God Almighty, that stuff ain't real. No, but that ain't your game and it ain't even your race. You can't hear your name, you can't see your face. You gotta look some other place. Where do you look for this hope that you're seeking? Where do you look for this lamp that's burning? Where do you look for this lamp that's burning? And where do you look for the oil well gushing? Where do you look for the candle that's glowing? Where do you look for the hope that you know is there and out there somewhere? And your feet can only walk down two kinds of roads. Your eyes can only look through two kinds of windows. Your nose can only smell two kinds of hallways. You can touch and twist and turn two kinds of doorknobs. You can either go to the church of your choice or you can go to the Brooklyn State Hospital. You'll find God in the church of your choice. And inside, you'll find Woody Guthrie in the Brooklyn State Hospital. Though that's only my opinion, I might be right or wrong. You'll find them both in the Grand Canyon at sundown. Thank you, Mr. Bob Dylan. And I was thinking about it all and how, you know, it was great that Bob Dylan got the, the Nobel Prize. And at the time they thought, you know, Leonard Cohen should have also got one. And then I think he passed away and it was too late. I would really argue that Joe Strummer could easily qualify. He's, he'd walk in that door easily too. His lyrics are up there with the best of them. Absolutely superb lyrics. The um, amazing film director, the documentary maker, Julian Temple, he he made a, an amazing film. I stopped using the word amazing, but Julian Temple made the film The Future is Unwritten about Joe Strummer and The Clash. Um, and and he, he, he did an ama a superb job showing the, the, the whole theatre of Joe's life and, and his outstanding achievement in music. And... Um, what you get in his lyrics, he said, is is a distilled, pure, really well worked philosophy. A whole um, a whole worldview in there, and it's um, it's really good. Okay, need to uh, just get an old uh, ah, that's really good. It's the the voice the voice helped him drink. Now, this next song is a song by Joe. Just making sure everything's working there. Hi, people. How you doing? Yeah, it looks okay. If there's anything wrong there, just, just send me a big uh, exclamation mark or something. Looks good. Lots of love out to everyone. Punk rock love, of course. The really tough love. Mm. This song is from... So Joe, the Clash had some wonderful... They had like a whole mythology. You could do like a box set. Lord of the Rings about the Clash and um, Joe had had some tough years when the Clash kind of finished up um, maybe 11 years or t certainly a, a, a long time where he, he did lots of amazing work still but it was when he teamed up with the Mescaleros this extraordinary group of really talented multi-instrumentalist musicians and they're really you know for me the Mescaleros they're up there too with the they're on a par. They're, they just brought Joe and, and themselves. They they just got to their Mount Olympus of musically. This is Coma Girl from uh, I'm not gonna say the album. I, I should have this written down. Coma Girl and it's uh it's probably the closest thing Joe gets to a love song in all his in all his uh, in all his work. Um that's beautiful. Come a girl, and this goes out to all the crews, all the people that work in the gigs that we're in this crazy upside down world right now. So, to help of God, we'll be back, and 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 the people that do the bring the music magic to reality in all these festivals and and things. So this is, this goes out to everyone. Uh, that was a wonderful show. The um, voice from an empty room, the RT, the all the Irish musicians. It was a beautiful, 
tribute and a help for for those guys. So this is this is for them. Joe loved festivals. Later in his life, Glastonbury and and the whole Joe Strummer bonfire became. It, it was like a huge part of his legacy too. He'd have these everlasting bonfires for the whole festival, and and there'd be most amazing meeting and communication and, and fun around the bonfire, music and chat. That was Joe. Call my girl. I was calling through a festival way out west. I was thinking about love and the acid test. At first I got real dizzy with a real rocking dad. Then I got this coma girl. There's a festival back on the go. Okay, so let's just uh, what's that there? Hello, everyone. I'm trying to re there's uh, Aiden Darty, good man, long time. And Carmel, hi Carmel. Okay, my I think we might need to get glasses there. It's just the distance to the little screen. Okay, quick drop of the little Brady mug. Ah. So in my last um, in my last first scoop session, just to take a pause, the uh, this whole thing. Look, if you've got a euro or fifty p or ten p, and if you want to throw it in, 
every everything tonight is I'm just doing this for a bit of crack for myself and, and to push myself a bit musically. But it's um I'm raising a few bob for the Scoop Foundation. Two two really amazing guys, two cool lads, uh, two brothers from Wicklow, Alvin start again, Calvin and Andy Sweeney. And uh, ten, about 10 years ago, maybe 11 years now, they started up the Scoop Foundation, supporting children out of poverty, and they are just, they're truly innovators in the charity sector, fully registered. And somebody asked me, Is it, do they do anything in Ireland? And they do, they really, they, they, they're working on a few homelessness projects in Ireland, in Dublin particularly, and also in the COVID, they, they jumped into action and, um, raised raised some some great money in fact the first scoop session went to help with pp that this session we raised 400 the last night so thank you again all my wonderful friends and family and my mom even i thought she got the decimal point wrong so my mom gave um 390 euros no 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 my mom was very kind and, and gave a lot of money the last time but uh, so that all went to PPE for direct provision centres and nursing homes. So so they're 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 also the thing that impresses me most also about them is they've they've helped a huge amount of children in some of the toughest refugee camps around the world from Syria and Iraq. They're also in Yemen. They've built schools. I think they've built. I will check that on the website. But they built a school in Cambodia and, and maybe more than that. But. They, they just have it going on. One of their most exciting projects in the last year, I think, is that they're doing online learning opportunities for children in refugee camps. And I just think that's wonderful. As bad as it is right now for us all in Ireland, uh, and we think we send out our, our, our uh, I'll say it, I mean, it's just, it's, it's horrendous what people are going through with COVID, but um, at least we have a fairly stable little country to, to keep us going so the Scoop Foundation is working for some of the most vulnerable children on the planet and I think they're just superb they're superb so the Scoop Foundation anyway the last night I have a great friend who is to I would say to to food and cooking he is to food what Joe Strummer is to music I want to send out a special uh, punk rock uh, headbutt of, of affection to uh, Michael Rat tonight. He he um he he's been a huge influence on me musically and culinarily speaking. Uh, Michael is a true legend of food and uh, we all love him to bits and uh, anyway Michael would always try and knock you off your uh, your your uh, your horse or your bike just to mess with you. So he said la the last night he wanted this song and he, he asked for this song. So the the it's interesting when you start digging and looking into things. There's so many connections out there in the in the world because when Joe Strummer was uh, learning to play music, he teamed up. His musical mentor was a wonderful musician called Timon Dog. Timon is is one of these people that you, when you watch him play his violin or his fiddle or the music just flows out of him and uh, so Joe teamed up with Timon and uh, he, he they, Joe used to go busking in the metro so the idea was like people would pass once and so when he started he was a bit like me and and, and you know hit and miss so he, he'd um, he play for them and and then and then he was playing a Chuck Berry song on a ukulele one time in the metro in London the subway and said no the, the metro the metro and um, an American guy got out of this train and just saw Joe Strummer playing a ukulele, playing a Chuck Berry song, and he just fell around the place laughing because he said, my God, man, never seen Chuck Berry on a ukulele. So, Chuck Berry's my ding -a -ling. This goes out to Michael Rat. I was a little bitty boy. My grandmother bought me a cute little toy. Told me it was my ding a ling. Go, oh, my ding a ling, my ding a ling. I wanna play with my ding a ling. Oh, my ding a ling. Everybody sing. I wanna play with my ding a ling. Sing along. 
Then mother took me to grammar school. I stopped off in the vestibule. Every time the bell would ring, catch me playing with my dingling. The garden wall. Oh, I slipped and I had a terrible fall. I fell so hard I heard bells ring. Held on to my ding a ling a ling. Oh, my ding a ling, my ding a ling. I want to play with my ding a ling, my ding a ling. Everybody sing. I I was swimming across Turtle Creek and there was many steppers all around my feet. Sure was hard swimming across that day. I had both hands holding my dingling. Oh, my dingling, my dingling. I want to play with my dingling, my dingling. Everybody sing. You must be playing with your own ding Oh, your ding a ling, your ding a ling. We saw you playing with your ding a ling. Oh, my ding a ling. Everybody sing. I want you to play with my ding a ling. There you go. Chuck Berry. I mean, Chuck Berry. They were all learning off Chuck Berry. Joe stood out, and, and of course, when I say Joe, I'm talking about The Clash, because a lot of the other bands, they, they did their thing, and they were fantastic, and they were exciting, and they were fresh. But if you take, and we'll have to ask Professor of Punk in Lockool Organic the exact uh, details. He's our Professor of Punk. If you take all The Clash albums, the diversity of genres blah 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 the, just the range of the music these guys were going back they even took they took Bo Diddley they fought the record company to take Bo Diddley on tour and if you want to look into it there's a hilarious put in Bo Diddley talks about the clash in YouTube and he's there and God rest Bo he was again one of the originators one of the great great rock and roll founding fathers Bo Diddley and he's there and he's giving out about the clash with their speakers uh, stacked up on the wall and he it's just brilliant he could be 75 when he's talking about looking back maybe he was 60 when he went on tour he opened for the clash and and it just shows you their commitment to music their commit their passion for learning music they took everything in they absorbed all the different musics so Joe Strummer yeah uh, right I want to tell you I want to so up on the wall behind me, I um, I got a couple of posters, so I just want to credit the artists. Um, this one here is Niagara, established 19... Behind me, 1977. Niagara, uh, established 1997. These were some of the graffiti works that, when Joe died in 2002, he was 50, and it kind of rocked, the, it, it didn't kind of, it rocked, it rocked the music community. Um, I've heard people that worked closely with the band. I mean, I've read interviews and stuff and like guys that you know they lost their dad or they lost their mum or they lost their brother or they lost their best friend but when Joe died they still they still miss Joe and um, there was an around the world there's a wonderful outpouring of, of in 2002 you know people were putting up these beautiful works of graffiti art over there I couldn't really see Emma and and Gary I think did that one up there without people you're nothing Without people, you're nothing. That was Joe's famous little speech. Without people, you're nothing. I want to give a huge shout out to this young man. He is, 
I tell you, for the Scoop Foundation art auction, the, the Scoop Foundation do this wonderful um, fundraiser for their work, um, helping children, and they, they, they're, they, w one of the brothers works in the art world, so he's got great friends and, and, and colleagues and a network in the art community, the, all, all the arts community. So they do this wonderful art auction every year, so you want to get Jack Godet. Jack Godet is, uh, is, is, is a great young man, and he very kindly uh, allowed me to use his, his lovely um, image for Black Lives Matter there. So that's, that's Jack from Mullingar, so thank you, Jack. Okay, what's, where to she next? Chuck Berry. Good man, Chuck. Um, okay. Yeah, so I, I'm going to pause. I'm not like Joe Strummer. I can't run a marathon and, and, and a few pints or... He went missing one time um, just before a big tour. Um, the clashes, the clashes mythology, the clashes stories are just fantastic. Like you know, I could be reading books about the clash for for a long time. They're so entertaining, but you know, funny. You know, funny because it's true. The uh, Joe went missing and, and and was missing for like six or eight weeks from from from, and he turned up and he ran the Paris. They found him. They, they saw him running the Paris Marathon and um, I'm not like Joe, I, I, I'm going to go, I'm, I'm, I just want to send out a thanks to uh, Richie Clark, Mullingar's amazing um, artist in wood, Richie. Richie put me on to the Wicklow Wolf. I'm, I'm not trying to sell things here, I just, I like to, oh, if something's good I like to spread it around. So Wicklow Wolf, I'm going with the non-alcoholic hoppy ale here, so, Jesus, oh sorry, it's a, uh, Thirsty work in here. Mm. Hope that she's doing great out there. Who's there now? Okay. Now we'll rock on. Next song Johnny Appleseed by Joe Strummer and the Mescalero. So this is later work. And um, don't let anyone see the Chris Packham, the wonderful uh, Chris Packham on the BBC. He, he was hugely into, influenced by the punk punk rock as well as a kid he even had a band and, and, and wrote a song and it was a great BBC documentary but I reckon probably one of the most punk rock things you can do right now is be trying to um, trying to help the planet and, and change change our systems to uh, to stop killing all the bees this is Johnny Appleseed with Joe Strummer and the Mescaleros Hey, hey. 
Let the summertime sun fall on the apple. Johnny, I love that Johnny Appleseed song. That was Joe. That was Joe. And the Mescaleros. Okay. Now, we're on song 10. Whew. And go for the Wicklow Wolf side. The non alcoholic, of course. Hmm. Let me go here. Now, this song is called The Road to Rock and Roll. And this was one that Joe wrote for Johnny Cash in those Rick Rubin American recording sessions. Joe was coming up on the age of 49, 50, and Johnny was really in his in his elder years. And if you if if you if you don't know the American recordings, really they're they're incredible. Johnny got to collaborate with like pretty much anyone and everyone that was a wanted to. He had he had a four or five albums and, and people came, people flocked to, to sing a song with Johnny. So this one hasn't been released for some reason. This was the song that Johnny Cash and Joe did together. So I wonder if Mr. Rick Rubin, we'd love to hear it. It'd be great to hear The Road to Rock and Roll. And uh, this is one of my favorite songs. So Johnny wrote this for, sorry, Joe Strummer wrote this for, of course, for for to sing with Johnny. So it's a, excuse me, it's a very interesting uh, song.
So, that was, you know what that was, wonderful song. Average playing, I know, but great song. Okay, um, yeah. I'm a bit fired to be, ah, there's Jane, hi Jane, how's it going? Hope you're having great holidays. It's the best mug ever, thanks for the loan. Okay. The next song I'd like to play, if you're still, if you're still, if your ears, if your ears aren't hurting too much, and before I go any further, I'd like to just say a huge thanks to my old lady. She she just cleared out for the few days while I was doing this, so it was it, it was a nice. Um, she gave me lots of space, and she protected her ears as well. So I'm very grateful to my wonderful lady wife, and uh, yeah, let's keep it punk rock now. Long Shadow. This song, um, again, Joe Strummer and Johnny Cash is a huge um, Joe and Johnny. This this is a song that Joe Strummer wrote for Johnny Cash. And um, it's to be found on his amazing third album when it was Joe Strummer and the Mescaleros. The um, posthumous recording, they, they put the album out after Joe died. And... Um, I think this final album, it's as real and as urgent, the music is, is as important as as all of the Clash music was too. I, I just think it was, Joe was taken very young, it was, it was um, a huge loss to music. So he wrote this song for Johnny Cash. Okay, let's do it. Well, I'll tell you there's one thing that I know. You don't face your demons down. You gotta grab them, Jack. Sure, you check on the do's and the don'ts. Crawl up the mountain to reach where the eagles fly. Sure, you can glimpse from the mountain top what so many means my thighs. If you put it all together, you won't have to look around. Relent. You know you cast a 
long shadow There's always rock and roll. Yeah. Long shadow. Okay. Good stuff. Now we're at uh, we're at number eleven. What time of the night is it anyway? Let's see now. Okay, good. We're just over the hour. We're nearly there. I hear you sigh in relief. There is, if you're interested, I won't do too much chat now. If you're interested, there's this wonderful book called Let Fury Have the Hour. Uh, Joe Strummer, punk, and the movement that shook the world. It's compiled or edited by this really cool writer guy, Antonio D'Ambrosio. And it really kind of blew my hair back when I was reading it recently for this show. Um, you've got people from Chuck D, from... Uh, Chuck D and Paddy Smith, Chuck D, Public, Public Enemy, Paddy Smith. Uh, there's just there's there's a huge number of people that that write an essay or, or contribute a photograph or, and um, really it's about how Joe inspired people. Joe Strummer's inspirational contribution to to the world. Um, uh, and and the editor guy Antonio, he he does this really cool. Um, piece of writing called Getting Back to the Bad Seeds, The Legend of the Long Shadow. So so he, he had, when he listened to that song and the new Streetcore album back in 2003, he he was just so moved by the, the common ground shared with Cash and Strummer. And, and he wrote that music is a pure expression of what must be said and what must be done. And, and I think there's no better man than Joe Strummer to, uh, to do it. To say it and to uh, to just be it, he was just he was cool. He was well cool. Now um, I'm on to song thirteen. I think there's two more after that, so just maybe there. X-ray style. Um, this is this is from I think the first Mescaleros album, Joe and the Mescaleros. So Anthony Jen, who was uh, a young gun in music at the time. He had met Joe. I think maybe Joe probably saw him in Glastonbury, jumping around on stage, having probably too much fun on the stage in Glastonbury. And um, they, they were talking, and, and Anthony Jen, this cool young musician guy, says, you're Joe Strummer. You should be fucking writing another album. And so Joe said, OK, come on, let's do it. And they did it. And, and the Mescaleros happened. And um, I have to say, I love the Mescalero stuff. I think, what a wonderful gang that um, there was Joe and, and he was he was off again, he was on the road with these superb, superb guys. And um, Joe, Joe Strummer and the Mescaleros, uh, I didn't realize until recently that the, the, the Mescalero name, it's actually the Apache tribe of Southern Athabascan Native Americans, a Native American tribe in Athabascan uh, in the New Mexico. So, so the Mescaleros. Here we go, quick, um, Quick wet the whistle. That's the lucky mug. <laughs> I'll give it back to you now next week, hey. Yeah. X-ray style. I need to see in an X-ray style. Okay.
They could never wash it down this time. saw in an x-ray style you know he he struggled I mean he had his he had his ups and downs like everyone else but his musical legacy he um, I saw Paul Simonon the the amazing have I said amazing before the incredibly stylish and king of cool bass player of the clash Paul Simonon was in an interview um, Paul has had an amazing career with, with his art, his visual art, his painting, and a um, member of the Gorillas, of course, with, with, with the, the Damon and so on, the Damon Blur guy. Anyway, um, Paul was saying in an interview recently, in the last few years, it's like when you look at the music industry, or if you look at, um, I see the battery, I better speed up, battery's going out on us. You look at the music industry, it's like punk never happened, and if you look at the crap, the shit that's going on in the world. These are struggles that I remember Bruce Springsteen saying recently. It's like this stuff was like we thought we were past this. So punk music and and the kind of clash DIY punk rock ethic. And it boils down to decency. It boils down to questioning authority. Because when I was a little fella, little boy growing up, and you know, good little kid, Catholic, Catholic boy. Dad was Protestant, so I had a double, double infusion of culture. But, you know, the punks were the bad guys. We said, oh God, those guys with the, you know, the funny haircuts. They were the bad guys. It turns out the punk rock, punk rockers, people like Joe Strummer were the good guys. They were challenging authority because, look at today, more relevant than ever. Okay, the battery's going low, so we got to rock. Hope this fella's going to keep on rocking for us. Hello, I'm Gilsonin. Good to see you. <laughs> Falling off my chair now, I'm. Okay, silver and gold. Joe was taken far too young. It rocked, shook, tore. It was heartbreaking for for all who loved him, his family and friends and his musical partners. So this was an, a beautiful song, a cover of um, um, Fats Domino. I hope I'm right saying it's Fats Domino. Silver and gold. Again, it's, it was released posthumously on the Streetcore album. Um, so Joe, Joe died at the age of 50, came in from a walk with his dogs, and he had a heart, a congenital heart problem, and, and just dropped, dropped at 50 after a walk with his dogs. It was, it was, it was hard, hard news. One, two, a one, two, three. Okay, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to see, can I plug in? Wouldn't it be awful if the... Oh, I'll just get through it. The phone is running low. Just see with that stretch across, would you? Okay, silver and gold. I've got my main man. Just just gently uh, put it across. Uh, am I allowed to say your name? My main man. I've got my main man here. He's the best. Only for him. Just, you can put it on over till it gets to... Oh, no, you're... Yeah, okay. Okay! Don't worry. Don't worry. Cool. Good man. That'll work. <coughs> Salt. Okay, you alright? Hmm. We're up next, I think. Okay, silver and gold. Silver and gold. Um, it's one of Joe's final songs. One, two, one, two, three, kick! Dancing every night, I'm gonna see all your city lights. Do everything sober. I got to hurry up before I grow too old. Gonna take a trip 
Okay, we're on 15 now. Yeah, relax for a minute. Um, there's only one more song after this, so two songs to go. Um, is the. Okay, we just hope to God the old. Ah, there's my friend. Hey, Foxy Baby. Just a quick word of thanks to our sponsors tonight. Um, I want to say a special word of gratitude to my manager, um, Mr. Finbar Cody of Under the Influence Management. And. Um, uh, our, our local sponsors, we have Fox's Fruit and Veg, serving the Mullingar area and Westmead area since 1953. And Lock Organic Farm for um, for educational and uh, Fox's for nutritional value and uh, yeah. Okay, uh, final song, no, penultimate song, Blues on the River. Um, so I'd like to introduce, um, I saw this guy's drum on Nationwide, I think. Yeah, I've got a Mitchell drum here, so I want to say thanks to uh, Mr. Mitchell. Um, look him up. This guy, he's an Irish man. I'm terrible now, but Mr. Mitchell is in Tipperary. He's making this beautiful drum. I got a, I'll have to, I'll, I'll, if I'm wrong, but I got this beautiful drum off. Uh, it's one of these... Okay, let's not get carried away on the drum yet, but the drum is coming at the end. So I want to say thanks to Mr. Frank Mitchell with his beautiful drum. And I'm actually going to invite Topper. Topper was the, for me, is one of the most powerful drummers of all time. Topper head on of the clash. Topper, I'm going to invite you over to Ireland and uh, come over here. Have a holiday when, please God, as soon as the whole COVID thing has gotten under, under a bit of control. I'll cook you a nice few dinners and you can teach me some rhythm on this bad boy. The Mitchell drum, a beautiful drum coming from Ireland now. It's, it's available. I got, I got my drum. So, Topper, please come and teach me some rhythm. No one will like Topper head on the clash. When, when Topper left the band, they, you know, and all credit to Terry Chimes too, the other drummer, but Topper, you know, the beating heart of a band. Okay, let's do this. Blues on the River. This song, ah, it's, it's, um, this was kind of from Joe's uh, period between The Clash and The Mescaleros when he was doing lots of different stuff. He was doing some movie work, etc., etc. And he was still making some incredible music. Uh, Blues on the River. Um, and, and for me, there's a line in here that is one of the most powerful lines um, for dealing with keeping your head right. Joe had some serious uh, ups and downs in his life. He had tragedy in his family. He had the grief of suicide. 
of his older brother, and um, he he uh, he never gave up. I mean, um, I think I think it's um, what can I say? Um, it's one of the hardest things going, and uh, for anyone out there tonight that's not feeling great, there's a line in here for you. Just no matter how deep the river is, find somebody who you swim with. Yeah. Joe. Blues on the river. Here we go. Go, go, go! Here we go. Signaling my red cigarette. Won't somebody please connect? It's long gone dark and no moon yet. Oh, blood strum rum, take your blood. To the river and run. <laughs> Joe was a <laughs> Joe really struggled with the smoking ban when it came along. So that was Joe, and uh, 
There we go. Blues on the river. Thank you. Hope that was okay. Oh, there's... <laughs> to my darling sister. Lots of love. Okay. Um, that's Naomi Lowry. How are you doing? All right, guys. I'm going to go, and it's like when the band goes off, and, and then you come back. You pretend that you're going off, but then you come back and do the final song. So I'm going to go. I have a quick costume change. Give me... 30 seconds I'm gonna I'm gonna leave um I'm gonna leave this here now and I hope nobody minds on, on, on the powers that be but um, I'm gonna leave you with this while I'm uh, going off and then coming back for the final song thyself. So now I have to say, people can change anything they want to. And that means everything in the world. Uh, show me any country. Not the people in it, but it's the people that make the country. And people have got to stop. should have that in a big billboard across Times Square. You know, think on that. Without people, you're nothing. That's my spiel. Yeah, Joe, without people, you're nothing. Okay. <clears throat> Final song. Thanks be to God, you all scream. <laughs> I want to say a special final word out to uh, Elsie Marie Rogan. Lots of love to the Rogan family. Adam, can you turn off your phone there? I think there's some quick. Adam! Hard to get the good sh There you go. Thanks. There's. Okay. Lots of love out to the Rogan family, especially the new baby, Elsie Marie. Well done, everyone. Sophie and Paul, we're thrilled for you all. Hey, Robbie Lee, good to see you up there. Okay! <sighs> so that was the Mitchell drum. Topper head on. We're, we're waiting in Ireland as soon as we're able to travel. I need some rhythm lessons as you as you can see okay final song tonight my friends and thank you so much for anyone that was able to spend some time um, if you've got 50p spare throw it in for the scoop foundation supporting children out of poverty I've had great fun doing this and um, my my wife and son really want me to stop at number two but we'll try and do number three eventually I don't know who will we do for number three Joe Strummer was he was in education. He's such a such a wonderful human being. Without people, you're nothing. This is the white man in Hammersmith Palais. This is for my friend Joe Brady.
On stage they ain't got no roots rock pedal On stage they ain't got no roots rock pedal Smith. Look at Paul's guitar. Okay. Yeah. I'm finished.